But it's like probably never, it's like feels very new yeah, and fresh. Yeah. Like that. Well, you know, in the United States, you went through a lot. Yeah, in the United States, Other. we like to think of grief as like stages, but in the Buddhist tradition, it's not. It always is part of your life, it's part of your journey. You're grieving? It's always part of your life, and you, you, you carry it in a spiral, and so some days it's level. Some days you're going up a hill, some days you're going down a But it's so also so high. But I, I read that. <laughs> That's when you're dangling. <laughs> and it's not like I'm a super short person. For the last, My last year, year, up to this year. And I didn't come in and move them around either. <laughs> I, I've certainly always considered doing that. Yeah. I can't find a le Oh, maybe this is, is it. it. There's like so many, Barbara. Yeah. There's one here. And I go, yeah, and there doesn't seem to be one. Oh, no. There's seven minutes. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. You really do go with them, and they're different. No, you don't want to. Some last longer than the stages. A little bit. She's learning to use them. They want her to use them. You know when you go through with my mom. That's Lorenzo. Yeah. Lorenzo. With my mom. I still have, it, it, you know, she's been five years. She's but she was in a nursing home. Let's hide. They broke her in half. Yeah, she's going to fall. Oh, yeah, they did. She'd have probably lived longer. <laughs> but they broke her. Okay. That works for me that way. Um, yeah. Is that better? No, it's tricky. I see how her barely touched the floor. I'm not, it's a sensation I'm not used to. <laughs> Like all these couches that you put on very, very This is a busy. Uh, I'd like to call to order the uh, Board of Education meeting here for April 18th, uh, 2018. I have uh, Sandra here to uh, give us a message for our interpreting, please. Sí, buenas tardes. Si alguien necesita interpretación al español, levante la mano y les alcanzo un receptor de interpretación. Gracias. And also, uh, please stand for Pledge of Allegiance. Sandra will lead us in that. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America 
and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Puro fidelidad a la bandera de los Estados Unidos de América y a la República que representa una nación bajo Dios, indivisible, con libertad y justicia para todos. Thank you. You may be seated. I'd like to have a moment of silence in honor of all the APS graduates who've lost their lives while serving our country, and also for those of our APS community who have recently died. Thank you. Could I have a roll call, please? Yolanda Montoya Cordova? Here. Peggy Mueller Aragon? Here. Lorenzo Garcia? Here. Barbara Peterson? Here. Candelaria Patterson? Here. Elizabeth Armijo? Here. Dr. David Piercy? Here. Um, I'll have a motion for adoption of the April 18th Board of Education meeting agenda, approval of the March 21st, 2018, and April 4th Board of Education meeting minutes, and the April 3rd Special Board of Education budget work study meeting minutes. Uh, but I would like to pull off item 7A.2 for a separate vote prior to the consent item. With that change, uh, do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Uh, second. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. Uh, we'll go on to recognition of student, staff, community. Uh, uh, Secretary Cordova. Welcome to tonight's board meeting and thank you for coming. Our first recognition will be introduced by Troy Hughes. Associate Superintendent for Zone 4. Good evening, uh, Mr. President, Superintendent, members of the board. Uh, tonight, I have a great honor of recognizing several exceptional students, and you're going to see uh, the cream of the crop here. We have 23 APS students who qualified for the National Merit Scholarship, semi-finalists, and based on their performance, based on their performance of the pre-SAT. To advance as a finalist, the student must continue to have outstanding academic records, be recommended by their high school principal, and earn a high SAT score during their junior or senior year. Students must also submit an application with an essay and information about their participation in school and community activities. As I call your name, and this will be a long list of names, uh, if you will please come up and line up uh, behind me and against this wall, all the way back to Mrs. Wahi, raise your hand. We will get 23 amazing students here momentarily. So, um, you know what? These kids are amazing. You can clap all you want. So, uh, <laughs> you don't have to wait till the end. So, from Cibola High School, we have Gage Bowman and Michael Kessling. <laughs> all right. From Del Norte, we have Benjamin Cochran. From El Dorado High School, we have Maria Anna Cheshire, Car Carolyn Pineda, Nicholas Sevion, and Todd Snow. Maybe this long list will get shorter here as we, as we continue. From La Cueva High School, we have Thomas Brown, Gabriel Cuneo, Don Con Dominici, Matthew Eck, Emma Hazard, Ashe Jean, Abigail Jones, 
Nicholas Justice, Brandon Limery, Siddharth Namashavayam, Daniel Ndubingo, Dubongo, sorry, Megan Tron, and Elizabeth Vaughn. Next from Manzano High School is Emily Clark. <laughs> and from Volcano Vista High School, we have Naomi Rankin and Matthew Sanchez. Would the families, friends, and principals of these exceptional students please stand? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. You guys are absolutely amazing as everyone coming together to raise such fantastic children. Beginning in March and continuing to mid-June, the National Merit Scholarship Corporation selects approximately 7,400 finalists from a pool of 16,000 semifinalists across the nation to receive the National Merit Scholarship Award. Merit Scholarship Awards include National Merit of $2,500 scholarship, corporate sponsor, um, a merit scholarship renewable up to four years, college sp sponsorship uh, from the National Merit Scholarship Award renewable up to four years, and special scholarships renewable up to four years. So to these students, we are absolutely proud of your accomplishments and looking forward to hearing more about your work in the world. Let's show great appreciation for these students and families. Thank you guys. No, no, stay. Oh, you tell me, boss. <laughs> you fool. I'm just going to let him go. Parents, if you don't mind holding off until the end of recognitions and then we'll take the whole group out and uh, take some photos and, and put them out on our Twitter accounts and different things to represent our amazing work from your schools and your students, okay? Thank you. Congratulations again. So our, our next recognition will be introduced by Dr. Chris Muir, Executive Director for Student, Family, and Community Sports. Thank you. Uh, Mr. President, members of the board, Superintendent Reedy, um, every year we have thousands of families and community members volunteer in our schools. Um, that's pretty significant, and I think that they're kind of the 
the wedge that keeps everything going in our schools. Without them, we'd have a very difficult time in our schools without these volunteers. On any given day, these dedicated volunteers are helping out in the classroom, in the front office, working with students one-on-one -on -one or in small groups or in reading and math, chaperoning those field trips, you all remember those, <laughs> participating in parent organizations, assisting with homework diner, participating in college and career days, helping with athletics and extracurricular clubs and events, offering after school clubs, and that's just a few things that they do with our schools. Since July um, of 2017, we had 5,070 volunteer clearances applications were processed. And you're thinking, only 5,000? Well, they're good for longer than one year, so when you put that together, that's nearly about 15,000 volunteers um, when combined with our special volunteer clearances and the application processes of last year. So we have um, many, many people in our schools that are volunteering. This year we asked schools to nominate a few individuals whose unique work goes above and beyond the contributions to better student outcomes in our schools. These volunteers worked tirelessly to advocate for our students and schools so that additional enrichment programs and services can be available to all students. I'm going to turn this over now to Elizabeth Calhoun, who's the manager of the volunteer program and special projects unit, to tell you more about these extraordinary individuals. Thank you, Dr. Muir. Um, so it's my pleasure this evening to announce the winners of the APS Outstanding Volunteer Awards for 2018. Um, so volunteers, when I um, call out your name, if you can come up and uh, line up against the wall and join us up here at the podium. Um, in the outstanding youth category for ages 20 years and under, this award goes to Jacqueline Valdez. Jacqueline is a student at George I. Sanchez Community School, and she's deeply, intrinsically motivated to serve others, which is not typical for her age. She has served 156 hours this last calendar year at Etrusco Heritage Academy High School, located next door. Jacqueline attends every food distribution event at AHA, and she also reaches out to students in need of offering support, comfort, and friendship. So thank you for your service, Jacqueline. So we may want to hold our applause till the end um, because we do have a few. <laughs> In the Outstanding Volunteer Team category, this award goes to Betty Canijo and the Birthday Club. Betty has been known to say, if you see a need and you can fill that need, then you should do so. Betty read an article about a woman throwing monthly birthday celebrations for students in need. She saved that article for six years, and when she had the opportunity, um, when the opportunity arose she, for her to act on it, she did. In 2004, through a partnership with Title I Homeless Project, Betty and two friends began serving highly mobile students who lack a permanent nighttime residence. Fourteen years later, they have a core group of 18 volunteers serving in nine locations. Many of Many of the birthday club volunteers are retired classroom teachers who understand that all students should have an opportunity to feel special and celebrate their birthday with their peers. This helps students have self-confidence and when students know that someone believes in them, they are more likely to believe in themselves and succeed in school. Thank you, Betty and the birthday club for your service. Um, yeah, if you want to come up. Um, this year we received many incredible award nominations in the adult category, and after much deliberation, the committee was able to identify some nominations that rose to the top. In the outstanding adult volunteer category, this first award goes to Anthony Lupinetti for service in STEM education. What started with a father helping out in his son's school at North Star Elementary has evolved into a computer coding and robotics program in every third, fourth, and fifth grade class. Kindergartners are generalizing code experiences with reading and math, while fourth and fifth grade students are using coding program Python and other programs that would otherwise be unable to access. This experience has encouraged some of the students to pursue coding, engineering, and even biology as a career. Thank you for your service, Anthony. In the outstanding volunteer category, the next award goes to Mary Trinan for service in liter 
literacy education. Grandma Mary, as she is referred to at Griegos Elementary School, has volunteered more than 276 hours to date for this school year. Grandma Mary's love to help students needing extra support in reading stems from her brother's struggle with reading when he was a child. Grandma Mary was called to teaching, and as a volunteer, she goes above and beyond to find ways to engage the students and help them learn. Grandma Mary walks in every morning with a smile, and she really cares about each student, their well-being, and their academic progress. Thank you for your service, Grandma Mary. In the Outstanding Adult Volunteer category, the next award goes to Arthur Storer for a decade of service in school and classroom support. Mr. Art, as he's known at Osuna Elementary, has, has served eight hours per day, five days a week for the past nine years, putting in more than 13,000 hours of service. Mr. Art began volunteering when his granddaughter attended kindergarten, and while she has grown and moved on, Mr. Art has stayed on as a volunteer. Mr. Art's willing to do whatever's asked of him during school day and after hours. His participation often makes it possible to have enrichment activities, and is an invaluable part of the Osuna community. Thank you, Mr. Art, for your decade of service. In the Outstanding Adult Volunteer category, the next award goes to Susan Menicucci for her dedication to fostering reading and literacy at the middle school level. Ms. Menicucci, a parent at Cleveland Middle School, volunteers up to five hours each week where she helps in the library, sits on the family engagement team, and recently helped organize the first annual Cleveland Cultural Diversity Night. With reading on a decline, Ms. Menicucci's belief in the value of books has been a motivation to even the most reluctant of, le of readers, and her work promotes equitable access to a library and books for all children. Susan and the librarian at Cleveland have worked to transform the library into a 21st century learning center by adding a maker space, a green screen media center, and exciting reading promotions like a blind date with a book. <laughs> Thank you for your service, Susan. <laughs> The next Outstanding Adult Volunteer Award goes to Miguel Troncoso for his unwavering service in a middle school. Mr. Troncoso has, simply has a heart for service. Miguel began volunteering at Garfield Middle School when his son was in the fifth grade, spending time helping at the on-site food pantry at a time when Garfield began to focus on hunger at their school. While volunteering with the food pantry isn't unique, what is unique is how, Ms. how Miguel and his entire family stepped up their service when the school was in danger of losing their food pantry. Miguel's volunteers, volunteer work has evolved as he has taken over the operation of the food pantry, and this school year, he's incorporated a student leadership program into this pantry operations. In this program, students have an opportunity to learn skills in organizing, inventory control, operations, and leadership, all while helping out in the food pantry where they have distributed more than 13,000 pounds of food this school year. Thank you, Miguel, for your service. In the Outstanding Adult Volunteer category, the next award goes to Del Condelaria. His in, for his inspirational classroom support and encouraging healthy eating habits. <laughs> Mr. Condelaria is a retired pediatrician and he's been giving 26 hours of his time each week for the past two years at Painted Sky. The impact of Mr. Condelaria's volunteer work has had a positive effect on students and the community. He works closely with students at the fifth grade level, but he also builds relationships with students while they're waiting in the lunch line. In the many, many letters that we received from the students at Painted Sky, we learned that Mr. Condelaria often awards stickers to the students who eat their vegetables, thus promoting healthy eating habits. As one student passionately said, if you haven't met him yet, it should be on your to-do list. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Condelaria, for your service. And our final award for Outstanding Adult Volunteer goes to Tommy Jewell for serving as an intergenerational mentor to homeless students through the Lowell Elementary School Title I Homeless Project Tutoring Program. 
Mr. Jewell has demonstrated his commitment to the students by being there week after week, showing up every Tuesday night on time and ready to help. Mr. Jewell knows that many of the students do not have the educational support they need in their homes. So he works with them individually or in small groups on homework, reading logs, et cetera. The outcome for the students he mentors is demonstrated by the positive academic and social emotional gains shown by the students. Thank you for your service, Mr. Jewell. I wish we could bring all 15,000 of them up in front of you and tell their stories. This is the cream of the crop here. With the family members and the friends that are here to support these outstanding volunteers, please stand so we can recognize you. I also want to thank the volunteers who served on the award selection committee. I bet that was a really tough committee and I'm glad they didn't ask me to do it. Um, Stephanie Brown, Angela Crispin, Monique Shu, Nancy Davenport, and Anna DeBira, thank you for your time spent during spring break to read all of those applications and make the hard decisions on who would get the awards. If you're here, could you please stand so we can recognize you? And I know I'm preaching to the choir when I say all of our volunteers at APS play a critical role in increasing the capacity at our schools and educating the whole child. Tonight, um, we recognize all of your service for our schools and our students. Let us again show our appreciation for these wonderful volunteers. We can ask our volunteers to just stay for a few minutes after. Thank you so much. 
Thank you so much. That young one. Oh, yeah. It's nice to do this. I know. I know. How do you decide to do this? I didn't have a clue about anything. This is the way the music is. It's all about me, first of all. Second of all, yeah. Oh, my God. But it's just, you know, every young person is engaged in something Oh, Good morning. Uh, yeah. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. <laughs> All right. Okay. What are we doing now? Okay. I really wanted my picture with Tommy Joel. <laughs> Tommy Joel. <laughs> she got down there. Oh, you did? Yeah, she did. Okay. Is Ham over here? All right. This time this year. So his great grandson oh. and Joseph are best friends. The room emptied. They've been oh, really? best friends. We're freezing in here. We need to bring the group in. We're freezing in here, Brenda. And Joseph was We're freezing. Home. We're all freezing. Oh, they've been friends. Yeah, his claim to fame is that he taught Joseph how to do everything. Oh, okay. He's fascinating. Hey, Maria. <laughs> you weren't there, were you? <laughs> well, they were in nursery school. <laughs> Cool. Was there actually a video with this? Look at this. Oh, it was so wonderful to see all the people here. There was a video here. with oh that God. last group, but I didn't see it. Was there a fire drill? <laughs> didn't quite make it. <laughs> They're coming. <laughs> oh, well. All right. So we're getting the next group That in. movie was uh, awesome. <sighs> and then after I read that, <laughs> They've taken the language of progressives. Mm -hmm. <coughs> They've lifted it. Yeah. How exciting. <laughs> really? Mm. It's just blowing on us. Yeah, right we here, don't really need heat. Okay. Let's just turn it off. It's That's aggressive. We can get started. Hands are frozen. Okay, so we're going to go on to uh, public forum. So whether you are here with a request for the Board of Education to consider, provide information, or just see how the Board of Education operates, we want you to know that you are welcome. The Board of Education has established rules for expected civil behavior during the meeting and public forum. Upon signing in to speak tonight, you received a signature form and copy of the procedural directive which outlines those rules for expected behavior. The presiding officer will enforce these rules as appropriate throughout the meeting. Tonight, there are 13 speakers. Uh, therefore, to accommodate the greatest number of speakers, each speaker has two minutes uh, for comments within the 30-minute public forum. The time remaining to speak will appear on the screen in front of you, and you may not yield your unused time to another speaker. You are always welcome to submit additional comments to the board in writing if you are unable to convey your message or you are not able to speak within the 30-minute public forum. The Board of Education encourages you to stay for the entirety of the meeting so you may listen to board member comments before we adjourn. Only at this time may your concerns be addressed at the discretion of each board member. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call up the first three speakers. You can line up and we'll just go in threes. Um, the first one is Mary Kelly, Courtney Hinman, and Sylvina Farman. Hopefully I got that right. So the three of you will just go ahead and start with Mary Kelly. Are you Mary Kelly? No, I'm not. <laughs> you gave me her number. So. All right, we're ready? Go ahead. All right, all right. Well, uh, good afternoon, Board of Education members, Superintendent Reedy, Associate Superintendent Blakey. My name is Courtney Hinman, and I'm a special education teacher at AHS. I'm here tonight to speak to the concerns about teacher representation on the inevitable hiring committee for our new principal. I have a, a letter here that states the position of staff at AHS in regards to the matter. 
In short, our collective position is that all teacher representation on the hiring committee needs to be selected by us, the staff, and not by admin. Uh, we are currently in the nomination process at Albuquerque High, and will very soon be submitting a list of our colleagues who have been selected to serve on our behalf. Thank you. Go ahead. Hi, um, I'm Mary Kelly, and I also teach at Albuquerque High School. I teach social studies, and I just want to reiterate that it is the unified will of the staff at Albuquerque High School that we have a democratic, staff-driven process to select our new principal. It's important to, that these decisions be made in a timely manner. The board and district leadership should honor our demand as soon as possible so that we have ample time to review candidates, conduct interviews, and select a principal in a thoughtful manner. It is crucial to us that we ensure our new school leadership aligns with our school culture and community. Thank you. Go ahead. Buenas tardes. <laughs> I'm short. Uh, superintendent, como le va? Members of the board, thank you for hearing us. Uh, my name is Sylvina Farman. I've been a dual language social studies teacher at Albuquerque High School for plus minus 10 years. Uh, and <laughs> I'd like for all of you to allow us to be part of a hiring committee for uh, choosing a new principal. Albuquerque High School deserves a principal that is adept at building the relationships with people, all people students, families, and staff, and treat everyone with respect. A principle that exhibits leadership, and that leadership be shown, um, be an example for staff and students. A principle that will be fair and consistent, and a principle that will be organized and prepared. A uh, principle must be an excellent listener and maintain accessibility. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you. Okay, the, the next. The next three, uh, Chase Bailey, Alyssa Bernadon, and Evan O'Connell. Go ahead. All right, good afternoon, Superintendent Reedy, Mr. President, uh, other members of the board. Thank you for the opportunity to speak here today. Uh, my name is Chase Bailey, and I am a senior at El Dorado High School, and I'm also currently the student body second vice president. We are here today to advocate for students in light of the recent tragedy at El Dorado High School and the increasing rate of suicides among high schoolers. Never before has a generation been under such scrutiny to put forth an agreeable image. In a world where communication is constantly at our fingertips, we have somehow lost the ability to genuinely share with others. Now to believe that today we may be able to solve this problem completely is drastically impractical. However, if we allow ourselves to believe that what we do today is incapable of making a difference, we will never know how bright tomorrow could be. Therefore, it's time we start addressing this issue head on. We must strive to erase the stigma associated with things like depression and anxiety. We want the district to invest more resources at the school site for students to access mental health care. The cost of this endeavor would be infinitesimal compared to the impact it could make on the future of our society as a whole. It won't be easy, but nothing worth working towards in life ever is. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. President, Superintendent, board members, and community members. I'm Melissa Bernardone, a student senator and a senior at El Dorado. I'm here to start to talk about the largest issue that is plaguing our community, and that is mental health. With no focus on mental health provided by schools, it makes students feel as though their mental health is not important or a viable problem to pay attention to. Our schools have an athletic trainer for physical health, but we lack a professional whose job purpose is solely in the interest of the minds of students. Students cannot be expected to perform at the best of their ability if there is no focus on their complete well-being. Students who are struggling are too nervous to ask for help. We must find a way to meet them at least halfway to show that we care and that we can hear them. We want the district to invest more resources at the school site for students to access mental health care. Thank you.
Hello, Superintendent Reedy, Mr. President, and APS School Board members. My name is Evan O'Connell, and I'm a junior at El Dorado High School. Throughout my years at El Dorado, I've experienced seven deaths of classmates, six of which have been suicides. This is an incredible number that's completely unacceptable. These years are critical for students' maturation into adults, and six of the best people I've ever known will never be able to see their future. They did not have a place to go. They did not have a place to feel safe. They did not have the ability to speak. I have not seen a single statement from the school board regarding students' mental health. If a student is hurting, how do you expect them to perform well in school? By not addressing these issues, the leaders of APS are embracing the stigma against mental health issues. By not making change, you are being complacent. I implore you to invest in your students. Out of the 142 schools in APS, only 12 have school-based health centers. Out of those 12, there are none located in the far Northeast Heights or Northwest Albuquerque. Students need to know that they have a place to go when they're in physical or mental pain. There are no full-time psychologists on campus. Counselors are not therapists and it is unfair to treat them as such. I believe it would be a wise investment to have an on-campus psychologist to tend to students' mental health needs. We want the district to invest more resources at the school site for students to access mental health care. Thank you. Okay, the next three, uh, Keegan, Keegan McCowan, I can't say that last name, uh, Elsie Stott, and Brianna Frazier. <clears throat> All right, thank you, Mr. President, Superintendent, and members of the board for giving me a chance to speak. Uh, my name is Keegan McEwen. I am a senior at El Dorado High School. I compete in football and track. Um, suicide is the leading cause of death for kids ages 12 to 19. At El Dorado this year alone, we have experienced four suicides. My sophomore year, the football team experienced one, and it was tough for all of us. This epidemic needs to end. We understand that APS wants a safe environment for kids in our schools, but hasn't made any strides to try and help with this problem. We want the district to invest more resources at school sites for students to access mental health care. A recommendation would be adding confidential student health centers to schools that don't already have them. Thank you for your time. Good afternoon. Um, I am a teacher at Albuquerque High School. My name is Elsie Stott. I'm the band and choir director over there. And with my fellow colleagues, um, we would like to echo that the democratic representation of our staff members on the committee to hire our new principal is very important to us. We really are invested in what goes on day to day in our school. We are members of our school community. We are invested in the students that are there and we feel that we have all of the knowledge and the understanding of our school environment to help make the best decisions in hiring a principal who can continue to move Albuquerque High School forward and to unite our entire faculty, our student body, and to really raise, um, pardon me, and to help us move forward with strength and with a unifying figure at the front of our school. So please take those requests and, um, and our letter. We are here as representatives of our staff. Thank you. Good evening, Superintendent Reedy, President, school board members. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak on the issues that have brought us here today. My name is Brianna Frazier and I am a senior at El Dorado High School. Recently, El Dorado has suffered many tragic losses of our students. We believe much are attributed to the lack of access our students have to mental health care. The issue of suicide and mental illness is an epidemic, but, as especially, but has especially hit our district and community hard. I believe we can send a powerful message by focusing our money and efforts on mental health so that we can be more preventative. We are saddened to have lost friends, but are empowered to be the solution. We expect great things here at APS, but we need your help to save our students. Um, we want the district to invest more resources at the school site for students to access mental health care. Thank you for your time. I'm going to also call up the last four. Uh, Shania, or Shania Hurado, Tyler Mitchell, Brian Kendall, and Eric Olivas. <clears throat> Good afternoon, Superintendent, uh, President, and School Board members. Uh, my name is Shania Dorado. I'm a senior at El Dorado. Thank you for giving me the time to speak out and to propose our issue. 
After a recent suicide at El Dorado, I've noticed that our community hasn't spoken out on this issue. As a response from the school, the staff read a paragraph during our sixth period about how we should take care of ourselves instead of coming together as a community and breaking the silence or taking action. I felt hopeless and decided that there needs to be somebody to speak out and bring students together in order to take responsibility on this recent action and build better ideas to help our school be a better place where many students uh, are comfortable and feel safe talking about mental health issues. We want the district to invest more resources at the school site for students to access for mental health care. Thank you for your time. Mr. President, school board members, Superintendent Reedy, thank you for giving me a chance to speak tonight. I'm here to address the issue of a large amount of recent suicides. I am a senior at Eldorado High School, and we have lost at least one student to suicide at Eldorado every year that I have been there. We feel defeated because each year we knew that it was probably gonna happen again. Today, one of my classmates said to me that she felt hopeless because these tragic events keep happening and it feels like we can't do anything about it. If there are active measures in place to prevent this, the students don't know about them. We feel that more could be done to prevent this from happening again. We want the district to invest more resources at the school site for students to access mental health care. Thank you. Good evening, uh, Mr. President, school and board members, Superintendent Reedy. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Uh, my name is Brian Kendall, and I'm a senior at El Dorado High School. Um, I'm here to address the issue of mental health. Uh, the morning of April 9th was a morning that I will remember for the rest of my life. As the news spread around campus, the look of shock could be seen on every student's face. Shrieks, crying, yelling, all followed by a silence that was absolutely deafening. <sighs> my younger brother was best friends with Blake Thies the sophomore that killed himself last Sunday night. I had no words to help him cope. What could I say? The El Dorado group is here not about Blake. It includes him, but it revolves around a bigger issue, and that issue is mental health. We want the district to invest more resources at the school site for students to access mental health care. Please allow us to bring about a change that will possibly help the next victim of suicide and definitely create a happier, healthier student body. Thank you. Uh, thank you guys for allowing me to speak tonight and thank you for your service. My name is Eric Olivas. Uh, I'm the chairman of the Northeast Heights Community Policing Council. Uh, I'm here tonight to talk about the role of this board in this district in the crime problem that we see here in our city. Uh, it's become increasingly concerning to me that uh, many of our schools are failing and they're producing or uh, complacent in the production of uh, many individuals that do not have the opportunities for economic success uh, and, and vibrancy that builds our community and makes this a better place to live and uh, build a family and that sort of thing. Uh, I have a window into one of your schools, Matheson Park Elementary School. Um, this is a school that's a D-rated school. It's been a D-rated school for many years, as far as I know. Uh, and this year, this school is moving to cut even more resources, I presume because of the budget this board produced. I don't know if that's true, but they're cutting an instructional coach, cutting uh, technology resources, already very limited resources, and cutting teaching positions. Uh, I understand this is a small school compared to some of the other schools in the district, but it's very concerning to me both as a citizen uh, and as somebody that's interested in the crime problem here in the city that uh, the, the resources that are available to this district do not seem to be allocated in a way that's gonna help this school succeed. I, I suspect this will be a school that we'll see state intervention on very soon. Uh, and I'd like to see the board take action before the state comes in and uh, demands changes here as they have it at many of your other schools. So I do hope that uh, you all can, can uh, work 
together with the community on this problem and, and see if we can address this in a way that uh, puts resources into the schools that are struggling rather than taking them away. Thank you guys for your time. Thank you for your input. Uh, this concludes public forum. Thank you all. Uh, we'll go on to the superintendent's report. Um, thank you, board uh, president, Dr. Piercy, board members, community members, and staff. The eloquence of the students here tonight um, was very moving. And um, I, I want to take this opportunity to add uh, more information. Um, since August, there have been over, there have been 1,094 student suicide referrals. Of these, over half were evaluated uh, to have high suicide risk factors. When we have a referral, we move as quickly as we can and uh, evaluate the, 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 the student. And um, half were um, high suicide uh, because more students are being identified uh, as having suicidal ide ideations, APS was able to provide interventions with more than a thousand students and their families. Last year, during the 2016 17 school year, there were 703 student threat assessments. These are students, now this is slightly different. These are students who threaten to harm others and we immediately provide a threat assessment in these situations. This year, within, with two months still left in the school year, we already have 826 threat assessments. This reflects 826 times that school principals the threat assessment director and or the school psychologist um, uh, being able to intervene when a student was threatening to hurt another student or staff member. Um, I'm very thankful for all the people who work tirelessly to keep our students safe and healthy, but it's not enough. It is never enough. It is never enough when young lives are in the balance. And we have heard these young voices, and uh, I want to thank them for being here tonight. I think what they said really hit home for us, and I want to say that we will follow their lead and really start looking um, and seeing what else we can do, how we can support our students that are hurting in this manner. So now we go to school materials and curriculum. Many voices and perspectives have been represented as curriculum and instruction has worked to select uh, elementary English language arts materials. This has been long in coming. As you know, budget cuts have not helped us move forward as quickly as we would like as far as school materials. But the selection process went through several stages. First, many potential publishers were screened through outside evaluators such, a, such as ed reports uh, by the curriculum and instruction department. Seven publishers were selected for district review. These publishers were evaluated using the instructional materials evaluation tool by a group of 37 reviewers, including principals, district administrators, reading specialists from both general and special ed, instructional coaches, representatives from all departments, as well as the Albuquerque Teachers Federation. Three publishers were selected for final review. That would be Pearson ReadyGen, Benchmark Advance, and great minds, wit, and wisdom. Teacher representatives were selected from elementary schools and trained in both the use of the instructional materials evaluation tool and selecting instructional materials that advance equity and respond to school and community needs. These teachers individually reviewed the three publishers over a two-week period. Also, all elementary principals and teachers who were, 
were also provided with digital resources from each of the publishers and were asked to provide feedback through an online survey. I'm excited to hear um, the final proposal, which will go to the cabinet for review at the end of April so that we can start moving forward and getting the materials that the students um, need. <coughs> The Student, Family, and Community Supports Division uh, will be able to fund behavior redirectors in every elementary school next school year. Um, you heard a bit about the behavior redirectors at the Finance Committee meeting. Um, and again, I want to stress that it is a non-punitive strategy that is used with students that are having some difficulty um, 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 with their behavior. The position uh, was developed for elementary schools that have seen a significant rise in inappropriate student behaviors. Although Dr. Muir and I shared many of the details related to this new position itself, I would like to share a few more of the principal's reactions. Um, after notifying elementary principals that they were eligible for a behavior redirector, Dr. Muir received several positive comments come back and um, frankly, uh, it was really sweet to, to, to read um, the responses. Bandelier Elementary School Principal Annette McCoy said, quote, thank you for recognizing the need for redirectors in elementary schools. It seems there are more and more students who need crisis support. Mark Train Principal Mandy Walker writes, this is incredible, all caps, um, incredible news. Thanks for listening to our concerns. Truly appreciated. And Armijo Principal Anna Chavez writes, this support will be much needed resource for our students as we build a new positive behavior culture at our schools. And of course, this is another thing that we're doing as far, um, this really dovetails, uh, what I wanna say is that it, this dovetails uh, beautifully with our academic master plan in looking and supporting um, the whole child. So speaking about safety, <clears throat> APS has formed a new committee to review site security and safety. The APS Security Assessment and Implementation Committee. This committee is made up of members of the Albuquerque Public School Police Department, the Capital Master Plan, Facility Design and Construction, Maintenance and Operation, and Instructional Technology, and is overseen by the Chief Operations Officer um, uh, Scott uh, Elder. More than 150 APS traditional and charter schools have been divided into 13 groups to be visited by the security assessment team over the next few months. Currently, the team has visited approximately 14 sites per week. They are very busy. The team reviews a number of factors at each school. These factors include cameras, door access, fencing, gates, and overall access to the site. Principals will be working with these assessment teams and will be able to offer their input as to what may be needed at the individual schools. Once completed, all 150 plus assessments will be reviewed and a project plan will be developed to place new equipment and technology in our schools. You may have heard of this um, as it is referred to, um, the word is hardening the school. The idea is to restrict access and to allow staff greater ability to secure an area quickly. It is hardening, but it is, um, it's, it's, uh, uh, we wanna harden our schools. It's kind of a strange word. We want to harden our schools, but we also want to make them, keep them friendly uh, and uh, welcoming. So it's, it's something that we're going to try and do and keep that balance because we certainly don't want our schools to be, look like jails or, or anything like that. Um, Albuquerque taxpayers have already funded a significant portion of this work in past mill levy elections and we cannot thank them enough for their support. And we've been doing this for years now. So th for us, we've been, uh, we've been using um, the mill levy judiciously, again, to ensure uh, safety for our students. Uh, the New Mexico legislature has uh, allocated an additional $40 million for the state over the next four years to be used uh, for, um, 
making our schools safer. We anticipate that APS uh, would, would receive about two and a half million dollars each year of those funds. Community members will see evidence of this work as we add fencing and begin to install card access readers at our schools. Some of the work may be less evident as we upgrade security systems that include improved cameras and an overhaul to the district alarm system. First, respond, I'm sorry, first responders are now, are now able to receive updated floor plans to individual schools as well. And this is thanks to a new electronic system developed by APS. Schools are increasing lockdown practices and in response to student requests, just like we heard here, we are practicing at different times of the day so that staff and students will know how to react in different situations. Currently, our chief operations officer, our executive director of maintenance and operation, and our chief of police are attending a national conference examining best practices uh, across the country. And the word back from them is that the sessions are being are very, very uh, useful. We continue to look for ways to improve the safety of our students and staff. And so um, this Friday, April the 20th, is the anniversary of the Columbine High School incident. Um, a national school walkout is being encouraged through national news, social media, and websites like nationalschoolwalkout.net. Unlike the walkout in March, this is not a 17-minute walkout. And uh, nationally, students are being encouraged to walk out at 10 and not return to class. This is uh, a concern on many levels, including the safety of our students. In March, we sent uh, principals a letter with a series of ideas and suggestions that they may use um, at their school. And I'm working closely with the leadership team and strongly encouraging principals to work with their students to develop on-campus activities that can occur before, during, or after school. As always, we want to support the students and school staff in a way that both encourages education and safety. And so now the park test. Uh, APS Technology and the Office of Accountability and Reporting have reserved space in the APS Rankin Complex from April 9th to May 14th to fully support park testing. The space will be used as a base of operation for technician dispatch and tech support calls for both OAR and APS technology. The benefits of this command and call center include, and there's a picture right up there for you, uh, prompt support for park testing, which can help improve overall test scores by <coughs> avoiding confusing and frustrating situations in schools. Also offers collaboration between OAR and APS technology, resulting in consistent solutions to problems that may arise. And it's a setup uh, of computer and, fo and phone workstations as well as extra testing device storages, that, um, testing devices that are stored there that will not hinder the workflow of employees in other areas of the district. With our centralized impromptu command center, I like that term, we have a team of techs and testing professionals that will respond quickly and efficiently to the requests of all schools. I'm thankful for the work of the technology department and the Office of Accountability and Reporting for doing uh, everything that they've done to support um, our participation in PARC. And that concludes the superintendent's report. Thank you. Thank you, Superintendent Reedy. I, I thought there for a minute you were going to offer the fact that this command center was going to be for board members, legislators, and so forth to come take the test and see if they could actually pass it. You should. I think it no, might. For that, you would need hospital beds. Yeah, I, I, I think it. I think it might be embarrassing for some some of our people. Um, I just also like to encourage, if we could, if if you you all who are at public forum could stay around a little while. I know we are a little bit verbose and getting through our stuff, but I'm sure that we could have some comments. And, and also, I, I appreciate the superintendent for clarifying a few things. I think there's some things that we don't know that happen. And some of those things are because there's privacy issues. 
there's there's certain confidentiality that sometimes we don't share uh, because of the family, because of other things. And so there are a lot of things that are going on in terms of the issues that some of you have, have raised, both sides, to tell you the truth. Um, so stay around if you can. I know that it goes on a little while and you got other things to do, like school. <laughs> But uh, we appreciate all of you being here. And so if you can stay around, I'm sure you'll have some comments from some of us. So we'll go on to spatial issues. And there are several here that hopefully we can get through fairly quickly. Uh, and uh, Brenda, you're on the uh, target here for several. And this is the first one's a consideration for the approval of the timeline for the 2018 superintendent evaluation process. Yes, Board President Piercy, members of the board, Superintendent Reedy. Um, tonight, with input from the superintendent, um, you have three um, items in, in front of you, all related to the super in evaluation. Um, the timeline and process needs to be approved. The procedural directive has a couple of changes, and then um, a review and a possible revision of the evaluation survey tool. So the first thing is the timeline and the process. So according to your procedural directive, um, there are to be three informal checks check-ins and conversations throughout the year in April, July, and October. And so I've tentatively scheduled those times. You actually have existing meetings on these dates. So this coming Monday morning, April 23rd, would be the first one. The next one would be July 18th, and the third one would be October 3rd. <coughs> then for the summative feedback or the more formal evaluation, that's a, a more in-depth process. Um, we would send that out to you all the actual survey tool November 2nd you would have the chance about a week to independently evaluate the superintendent using that evaluation form you would return it to the board services office we would have about a week to compile all of your individual scores into one document um, and then um, we would send that document home in your weekend packets on November 16th to give you a chance to see how your answers are compared or in comparison to your fellow board members. Then we would have a special board meeting on November 20th where the board would meet alone, where you would have a chance to talk collectively about um, all of your responses and hopefully come up with some sort of a consensus ranking for the superintendent so she doesn't have seven evaluations but she really truly has one evaluation from the Board of Education. And then on uh, November 26th you would meet with the superintendent and review um, all of those um, items that you've previously discussed and provide feedback um, in written form for her. She would have 15 working days um, to respond in writing if, if she so chooses. Um, and then on the uh, meeting of the December 19th, you would have the opportunity to review, update, and vote on the superintendent contract. So that is the timeline and proposed process. So that's the first item on the agenda. Okay. Uh, any comments from the board member? This is pretty standard that we've had. It's just a matter of setting up specific dates so that we can actually accomplish what we've actually said before. So. And is the superintendent okay with a two-week turnaround time? I, oh, think that, I think that, yeah, she's reviewed this. So any comments at all? I'll entertain them. Okay, do I have a second? Uh, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. Go on to the next item. So the next item is actually your procedural directive. Um, and this year in 2018, they're actually um, all of the, the dates and months actually worked out. So there are very few changes. The only change that we would um, make would be in the summative feedback um, that you would schedule your executive session in November rather than December. And that's really the only, the only change. In 2019, of course, there will be many more changes. But for 2018, and this is, this is the only change. Any comments from the board members? Yes, yes board member Miller, yeah, we got it. On the, um, on the second under formative feedback to the superintendent, when I was reading over this, the second sentence, um, Dr. Piercy, when it comes to providing perceptions, that's a hard thing to do, to provide perceptions. I don't know if that's the right word that should be in there. I don't know if it's providing 
an analysis, providing observations, but providing a perception. Perception is more how I feel. I can't really explain that as much as I could if I was analyzing or just giving even an opinion or my viewpoints. So I just think that word, and it's used several times. So I just have a hard time with trying to provide my perception. What a better word would you prefer? I mean, what words? I mean, some of the one, the ones give, I give looked a, at give were, me a, give me a yeah, I don't know. The words I thought, viewpoints, analysis, observations, feedback, assessment, views, opinions, assessments. I, th I think that's what perceptions kind of means to me, but you know, you can, yeah, you I mean? it just does it to me. It's my perception's hard to, it's hard to explain. Well, would you prefer the word viewpoints? I mean, to me, that's the same. I mean, thing. I think we're providing feedback. I mean, feedback might be good. But uh, then it sort of clashes. But then it kind of changes something else, though. So Observations? Observations is the other one that I thought might be good. Mm -hmm. Because it's have, what we're observing, what we're. I have no preference seeing. here, other than the fact: is that the only change for that for that terminology? I, if you'd I use the same word every time, I, I mean, you it might. Anywhere else in here? Where is um, it? It's in that. Well, in that same sentence, perceptions is used twice, mm -hmm. in that same sentence, and then it's used again under summative feedback to the superintendent, in the first sentence. So I don't know if the same word should just be used every time, probably. Um, I'd assume if they use perceptions every time, then you should probably use the same word. Okay. Do, do we have a, a suggestion for a change that everybody would agree to? Uh, 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 providing, uh, uh, I don't know, observations? I have no preference. Observations. I'd be okay with observations. Would you be okay with observations? Yeah, observations. that's one of the ones that. Okay, well, let's use observations. And then the um, only other thing on that last paragraph as well, where it said the, um, I don't know if it's a third sentence down, Dr. Piercy, where it starts, the board will identify and provide explanations for strengths and areas of the superintendent's performance where growth can occur. That's just a hard sentence to, to, to understand, explanations for strengths and areas of performance. I mean, I think what it is is trying to identify that the board is trying to identify the strengths and weaknesses in the superintendent's performance and offer suggestions or giving feedback on both. I, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure that that's what we, we mean there. I think that's what it says to me. The, uh, the board will identify and provide explanations for strengths. Well, what we're asked to do in the evaluation form is to provide strengths and opportunities for improvement. And that's what we're actually charged to do, is to things we think are going well, things we think need to have improvements. And that's all it's saying. And that's everybody's opinion, and that's what we provide in comments. Mm -hmm. So as a board, what we do is we look at everybody's comments and we try to accumulate that into something that is a reasonable statement of what we think for the superintendent. So uh, I don't think I mean, there's any confusion in that. explaining it to everybody else I mean that's okay what if we just put a comma after identify just I think it might read a little bit better if it just read the board will identify with explanations strengths and areas of the superintendent's performance I I, because we could just strike explanation except the point is that there needs to be discussion and and uh, there needs to be an explanation of where the why don't we just say, why don't we just take out and provide explanations for i mean identifying is is really in the same kind of a context in my opinion i think that might sound so why don't we just say we'll identify strengths and areas of superintendent's performance i think that that'll sound, sound good? better 
Yeah. Uh, Dr. Piercy, if I could offer a suggestion, if you would just maybe say the board will identify and explain strengths and areas of the superintendent's performance where growth can occur. Does well, that I don't work? know whether we're going to explain too much. Okay. Okay. I think we'll be lucky if we identify. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> maybe maybe okay. we'll be able to discuss it a little bit. I'm not sure whether explanation is a but when is a good we term. We have rational reasons. We may have some yeah. rational yeah. reasons, but yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. So, for those of you in Albuquerque High trying to figure out whether you're going to have a principal someplace, note note that it's not easy to necessarily say how we evaluate things. So. Just, just keep, keep it cool. <laughs> There's a little wordsmith in here going on. Okay, um, I think it's a good idea just to say the board will identify strengths and areas uh, for growth, and then leave it that way. I think. What do you guys think? I'm down with that. You why. Yeah, yeah we'll just. It'll be a mystery. It'll be a mystery. Mm -hmm. We move for approval with the amendment. Yeah. And then the only other thing, and I know I had said this last or not. I think when we looked this over in 2016, I believe, is the superintendent will have the opportunity to, to provide feedback regarding performance of the board. I think feedback regarding our performance comes from the voters who put us in our positions. So, but I know I've said that before, so. I don't think that should be there. It's always helpful to me to uh, yeah. I know. get a I, I, from the superintendent, given that she has an impossible job. And I think, and, uh, and I think Lorenzo, if it would not have performance, just giving us feedback, but on our performance, that's up to the voters to decide how we perform. But I understand about the feedback. Yeah, I, I, you know? I don't mind eliminating performance, but I do think it is useful for me to get a sense of is mm -hmm. what we do uh, helpful. Um, is it helpful? But I think that, that would work. Just challenging, uh, you know, those kinds of things uh, are important to me uh, that, uh, that I get a sense of the relationship that we have. Um, mm -hmm. I how, we say, how about if we say this? Provide feedback regarding uh, uh, her, her relationship with the board. That I mean, we can leave it more open, is, Dr. Is Piercy, and just say feedback. That way it leaves it more open, open for the superintendent that we're not just saying about our relationship, that we just say the superintendent has an opportunity during this session to provide feedback to the board, and it leaves it open. Oh, but that's not, that's Instead not the Instead of specific. Thing. What we're talking about is our relationship with the board. We're talking about how are we doing, how are they doing, how are we working together, what's that collaboration going on, and are we really working together well? And that's the issue. Okay. And it's not about just getting feedback to the board. It's a matter of how do we work together. So, so should should we highlight that and just say provide feedback regarding the collaboration and the partnership with the board? Well, that's what I basically yeah. mean, his or her relationship with the board. Yeah. I think that would work. You think that would work? Yeah. Okay. All right, let me summarize it real quick. Uh, the three uses of perceptions we turn to observations. Uh, the uh, sentence, the board will identify and provide explanation for strengths, it was changed to the board will identify strengths in areas of the superintendent's performance. And the last one is that uh, we'll provide feedback regarding his, her relationship with the board. Uh, is that satisfactory with uh, board member Miller again? It is. Okay, with those changes, I'll, observe, I'll uh, entertain a motion for approval of the update. So moved. And a second. second. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? <clears throat> Thank you. And we'll go on to the next item. Okay, so the third and final item on the superin uh, superintendent evaluation process is the actual survey form. Um, as you'll see, this still says 2017. This is the actual form that you used last year. So I haven't made any changes to it um, so far this year. So it's um, up to you to let us know what you'd like to have changed. Um, in the, in the, uh, uh, to make it more quick, perhaps, uh, are there any, 
major changes that someone might suggest, and if there are minor changes, let's just provide them to uh, Brenda, and she can maybe incorporate those, get them back to us, and we can uh, work on that a little bit because right. I think we have a little bit of time we do have, to get we, this we do evaluation have tool done. So I, I don't want to spend a huge amount of time trying to wordsmith and do that kind of stuff here. But, but I, I think I feel like we just did this three or four months ago. So yeah, I'm, we did I'm it pretty quickly. Yeah, I, I'm okay with it. Uh, I, th I think you know, obviously there are some things that, you know, maybe could be better. You know, there's always things that could be better. Right. But uh, what do you? What is the voice of the board here? What do you guys think in terms of that? So do you want us to just give input on thing big things that we want change we want to discuss that now i think we and can little discuss things. any big things at all if you think there's a really major area that we're not covering uh just from a suggestion point of view and then maybe details could be put in you know later later uh, i mean the only yeah the only thing that i see when i was looking at some other evaluations is that they had more delineated specifically um, has a superintendent improved outcomes, whether it comes to like graduation rate, some of them did it by, it will improve yearly by this percentage. Some of it was just broad and said, have the academic, you know, outcomes improved, have the graduation rates improved, instead of some of them did it more specifically. Um, they did test scores. And it just depended on the school district. Some of them just had a specific percentage. Some of them just left it, just left it broad. So those, that was the only thing that I thought needed to um, be put in. Probably some under, under probably academic outcomes, I guess. <clears throat> but that's just kind of a broad one. But I don't know how that would. Um, if you'd want them all separate, you know, graduation rates, scores achievement gap I don't know or that may not be something that the board wants to put in there at all it's just we measure outcomes for our kids for our schools for our teachers so that's it okay that that probably could be a, a, a something within the academic master plan not a not a total different subject matter but but something within that to say, if you think that we need to have something to say, uh, our graduation rates improving, our proficiency is improving, or something like that. Uh, I tend to hesitate. I mean, I think within the academic master plan and the, and the details, I think that that's a place maybe where the superintendent might want to put specific measures and specific improvement goals. Uh, then I think within our more general thing, saying our improvement, we could refer to that and say, well, how are you doing relative to your own you know, I hate to, for us to establish what we think is some kind of a random number, but I think they might be want to do that, and they, then we then our question would be, okay, we'll we'll see how well you did relative to that, and I think that's part of you know what my thought is relative to measures is to say it, relative to what our, our administration thinks is reasonable, maybe a challenge, uh, you know, and there's what's reasonable, what's a challenge number, you know, kind of a thing, and then see how well we do relative to that. Um, and then maybe have something in here that's a more general thing that says, how are you doing relative to those improvement measures that you established in the academic master plan? Um, so maybe what, what you could do, uh, uh, Peggy, is to, why don't you address maybe a statement or two within the academic master plan that you think would be useful to do, and we'll give it to Brenda, and then we'll take a look at that as we, as we go on and look at the details of maybe changes to the but can we just put off vote i mean put off voting on this then until we see it because i don't think that's fair for anybody to vote on something that they haven't even seen what we might write well i think that's certainly okay <coughs> you know i mean i think again you know this was more fair. like a matter of trying to get organized for ourselves to say how how do we want to really do this? So I we don't need this till next till November, right? Or next fall? Typically, yeah. you approve this in October. The only um, the reason I'm bringing it to you so early is because your procedural directive actually says that you'll do this in April. So that's why it's here tonight. So I think what we can do is, uh, if there aren't any really major subject, I mean, like topic areas, like you know, organize APS success, and you've got a different topic area you want <coughs> totally. Uh, 
I think, again, what we can do is take a look at this in some detail as we have a chance, look at the questions, see if, in fact, they pretty much capture the things. You know, like uh, Board Member Arjmiel said, you know, we've really gone over this kind of once not too long ago, so I don't suspect we want to have a huge amount of change, but there may be a few changes like you mentioned. So I suggest all of us go and, and look at this carefully, provide some input to, to, to our mom here, and... Uh, <coughs> and let her kind of organize those changes and then come back to us with some of the suggested changes and then see what we think about that. And then we'll bring this back again for a, maybe a discussion item. Some, at some areas that we could consider, though, would be around safety and mental health. Yeah, there could be <coughs> mental health issues. There could be uh, some safety issues, security issues, uh, you know, things that, that uh, superintendents already mentioned and some of our, some of our uh, students have mentioned. Uh, and again... Yeah, I, I, I don't think there's any doubt that, that these are areas of, of concern. You know, I think we all have said that in the past. We've said mental health has been a big issue to us. Um, there's all kinds of questions about how you do that and, and how you fund it and exactly what it means. Uh, it's embedded but, in the bigger picture, but I think we could do a call-out specifically. We could do some call-outs and say, what are, we, what are we doing relative to some of these things? And then have, have some some descriptions, you know, from our administration about how we're, how we're working that issue. And that might help, I think, satisfy some of the concerns that our students have shown uh, here. Uh, and so I think that's, that's a good possibility. So help kind of interface with that kind of an idea with our students, uh, how we might do that. I think, um, yeah, under the academic master plan, I mean, part of, part of what's in the academic master plan is addressing the needs of the whole child. I can't remember how it's, how it's stated exactly in the mm -hmm. academic master plan, but just to make sure that those major points and definitely mental health counseling, yeah, addressing needs, the whole child has just to spell that out and, and we can take a look. I do have, I mean, just like I have real concerns about the, the framework or the, the way that the teacher evaluation is framed now on effectiveness rather than competency. I have a real issue with that. Um, and I, we, we I know there's that. disagreement on the that. board. We've, we've, that has come up. I think that because this is us filling it out for the superintendent, I think that we have every expectation in the superintendent's um, summary of of what's going on, that the things like the outcomes of graduation, what is, what's the trend, what, what's happening with all of that, I mean, I think we'd certainly expect to hear that in, in the superintendent's um, presentation that she gives to us as part of the evaluation, but I would really resist coming up with some kind of adequate yearly progress numbers to randomly put on. I mean, I, th I think that the real issue is how is the district being organized to address, how is it being organized and what's being implemented to, to accomplish the goals? And then um, look at, looking at that, because that's really the role of the superintendent is that organization and implementation well, I, part. Yeah, so I, I think, again, that that's right with the exception that, you know, the superintendent can decide what kind of measures they want to have. Mm -hmm. And I think what our role is to say, how are you doing relative mm -hmm. to that? Yep, exactly. And so uh, if they want to, uh, and, and I think, again, it's not a bad idea to have, I mean, like attendance is, a, is an issue for us, okay? So what do we expect to have in attendance? You know, if that's going to be one of our big five uh, goals here, um, what exactly, what is our baseline? What are we trying to go to? And that's not for us to say what we're going to, but I think it is for maybe them to say what they're going to. So our question is, how are you doing relative to that, right? Mm -hmm. And um, what are you doing to make sure that we're, you're meeting your own specification of that, you know? It's not for us to say what that specification is necessary, although we could. I mean, I, I've seen a lot of boards do that. <laughs> I'm not sure that's the best relationship to have. I think, again, part of it is to say we... we treat our staff and our administration and our teachers as the experts. And they're the ones who need to tell us uh, what can they do and, and, and within the resources and so forth that they have, right? Mm -hmm. uh, 
Uh, and so that's part of the deal. And then we need to listen and say, okay, uh, uh, let's see how we do with regard to that. And I think that's kind of part of the deal. So the question is, what do we have in here that says, how are you doing relative to that? I think that was Board Member Muller Gunn's question for the most part. Uh, and then again, I think again, it's up to the superintendent to decide uh, relative whether that question is a legitimate one or whether in fact uh, we can uh, have other metrics and measures that are appropriate for that. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I'm kind of a big metric guy, but again, I, I want to be really careful with those. <laughs> You know, I want them to be real, and I want the data to be realistic, and I want it to be right and accurate, and I don't want to be making assumptions on things that, that aren't valid. <laughs> That's not right. So, you know, I want to be careful with that, um, even whether we believe or not in, in test scores and so forth. I want to be careful with um, how we use those uh, and make sure that if they're of any value at all, that they get back to our teachers and they get back to the education aspects of what we're trying to do. Uh, so I think that's a complex thing. It's complex and I want, I want kind of the superintendent to help us with that, that aspect of it. Yep. Uh, and, that, and, and I would just like to weigh in that I agree with that in that uh, this is the evaluation of the superintendent who is putting forward her best thinking in terms of how we're gonna move forward as a district. So for example, you talked this evening about the redirectors. I'm assuming you have a baseline or an idea of where we're at now and where you intend to be in a certain period of time. It's been my big challenge with our RDA folks that often they end up filling in the bubbles for people who make assumptions about where we should be as a district. And my concern is we need to decide where we're gonna be as a district based on the superintendent's leadership and her thinking and that of your staff. Um, my hope is that we can follow your lead in this respect and then think together with you as to whether or not we're making progress in getting there in terms of the goals that you have in mind for us. Um, I feel like if we were to come up with and repeat some of the other kinds of evaluative sort of observations that get put on us, uh, it's kind of like walking on jello. You just don't know where you're gonna, where you're gonna land. And I don't have confidence in a number of the tools that are currently being used. I've not uh, made any bones about that, but I am concerned that you know, how do we measure things like our organizational culture? We have a group of teachers here this evening who would like input. Right. And I think we need to show that we're listening. Um, we need to work to help students be more than just tokens in their relationship to us. But uh, how do we begin to help follow their lead and take empowerment seriously uh, so that, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm blown away by some of the data that I heard this evening. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my gosh, uh, we, have to, we have to figure this out, and I appreciate you stepping up and saying, yes, we have to look at this, and thank you for being here, but we want to make sure that uh, we're following your lead. Okay, so I, I think, again, path forward is to um, have individuals take a look at this, Provide some input back in terms of any changes you think might be useful here. Additions, uh, rewording, whatever. And then we'll bring this back for a, a further discussion in terms of, uh, of kind of finalizing maybe some of the details and then making approval in terms of that valuation. So we'll, we'll rely on you, Brenda, to bring it back in a timely manner. And, and guys, if you really want to put something in, please put something in. Don't wait until it's time for us to look at it again and say, oh, I have a whole lot of things now I need to put in. That's not gonna make everybody really happy, <laughs> okay? All right, okay. Thank so you. with that, that's what we'll do with this one. Okay, very good. So we have one more special item here and that's consideration for approval to select one APS student to be sent as a nominee for the $1,000 New Mexico School Board Association 2018 scholarship. <laughs> and that's like, uh, really, 
I got to go to the restroom. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Piercy, members of the board, superintendent. Just, just let everybody know here, these students are incredible. I mean, we have, yeah. <laughs> you know, we could pick any one of these students, and they, they would be absolutely perfect. So it's very, very difficult for us to pick any one of these students to say, eh, that's the one we're going to submit. So maybe I can make it a little easier. I can do a random I number generator need you to again. to pick three because oh. and, and rank them in order for me because the students have not yet decided whether or not they're going on to secondary school and that is a criteria for the scholarship. So if I can have three students and then work down the list to make sure I find one who's going on. What's my first? I don't know if that makes it easier or not. See, now she's just complicated. <laughs> Other, so other years. My, my random number generator will give me one. We could do it three times. Yeah. Okay. I also have all the names in an envelope. We could pull them out. Yes. I was going to say other years we have done it by random selection because there's no way no. to decide which of these, which which of these students is more worthy. They are all They're incredible. All and no, no I would worthy. I would recommend that we do it by random selection. Bring it over here. We'll pull it. Okay. Um, Agree. Okay, you want you Christine want three numbers. Already. You, you got you got you got them all. In, that's as, that's as random as we can get. Probably. I mean, I, I do like <laughs> random number generators though, <laughs> myself. I mean, would you get to select three that will. That will speak to us. Yeah. Who would you like to draw from the envelope, Dr. Piercy? Someone out there. Not us. Uh, I'll tell you what. Why don't we have one of the students here that's still here? Ah. Come on, come on now, guys. You came and stayed around. <laughs> that way, we can't be accused of any. <laughs> let's, let's see. Thing, you know, <laughs> student did it. Yay. Okay. Okay. She's from Oklahoma. She's gonna she's gonna be number one then. She's the one that dual. Chantel? Yay! She's from Oklahoma. She's uh okay. So zone two is being well represented. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. Yay! <laughs> That's the one from Albuquerque High. Yeah, heritage, one from Rio. And one from Manzano. That's a good oh, random see. Was it selection. Was Zavama? Was that the one from Manzano? Manzano. No, it was. Rachel. Oh, it was Chantel. Okay. It was Chantel. She's from Aja. Rachel's okay. from Rio Grande. Okay. Rachel. Yay, Rio Rachel. Grande. Okay. And Drydale. I'd like to make a motion. Okay. Second. So those will be the three in the order that we were picked. One, two, three. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. You guys have been a contributor to our success tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't realize that you were going to be part of the process, did you? <laughs> you are part of the process. I want you to understand that. Yeah. Always. <laughs> Good. Uh, okay, we've got a motion and a second. Mm -hmm. And you got who is the motion and a second? Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you very much. Appreciate it. We will go on to the, um, we have a pullout for the one consent item, and that's 7A.2. That's the one for approval of the authorization to extract the option to purchase a property lease purchase arrangement uh, for the Lamberton Place Northeast. Uh, I'll entertain a motion for approval. So moved. Second. Uh, all in favor, please aye. say aye. 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 All opposed? No, I, and I want to explain okay. this to everybody out there. Um, this is a property that right now data is in that building and they will be in there from what I understand for about three more years or so. And um, then they will be moving out. So, so far we have um, data has paid rent to APS for over three million, almost $4 million. It was, a, so I think that it was appraised at $3.5 million. So if you add the rent we've put in, 
that has been put in and what we're going to pay for this. And just so everybody knows, whoever did this did a really, really poor job with that lease to have a trip, triple net lease. All the money that we put in, that $3.7, $3.8 million, isn't getting put toward the purchase price. So it was a bad deal, a really, really bad deal. And we're buying this property for 3.5, so we're buying something that's worth very, you know, three and a half million, but we're really gonna end up spending like seven million dollars on something like that. And then when we're going to sell it, I don't know what we're gonna end up selling this building because we're likely not gonna be able to use it for a school because it's a industrial building, not meant for a school. Um, so I just have a hard time just being a fiduciary and I'm supposed to be taking care of taxpayers' money to be able to spend $7 million for something that isn't worth that. So I just think that uh, we were um, swindled, cheated, whatever, charged too much for something, um, and we're buying buildings in a declining enrollment um, across the entire state, not just here at APS. So that is the reason I'm trying to take care of your money. So that's the reason I'm not voting for it. Okay, so it has passed. Uh, we'll go on to the rest of the consent items. I'll entertain a motion for approval. So moved. And a second? Second. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. We'll go on to board member comments. Uh, and I will start down here with board member Armijo. Oh, thanks. <clears throat> um, Congratulations to all of our merit scholarship recipients and thank you to all of our community volunteers that were here this evening. It was an incredible group of people. And in reference to community volunteers, I also wanted to shine a light on Jennifer Reardon, who was on the stage with us not too long ago from Wells Fargo, who died tragically yesterday with the Southwest Airlines flight. So she was an incredible community partner and she will be truly missed. I also wanted to point out that we are, as a board, very invested in the health, safety, and well-being of all of our students, which is why we volunteer our time to serve on this board and to work closely with APS leadership. We love and support each one of our students, and we are very invested in your, your safety and your well-being. Um, in terms of our safety assessment, perhaps we could also look at mental health services um, assessment and have a better understanding of the kind of services that are being provided and not just the services the mental health services that are being provided but how they're being promoted to our students and um, and if they're even aware um, we know that the, we hear of great work that takes place but we want to make sure that that's being promoted to our students as well and that they have access so in addition in addition to the safety assessment which we do desperately need and we appreciate your work on that um, I would personally like to see a mental health services assessment as well and what is out there. I also would like to so thank all of our teachers that came here to express their views and opinions on wanting to be a part of the hiring process and to our community members who are concerned about the schools in their community and, and um, wanting to be a part of that process as well. So thank you uh, each and every one of you for being here tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Board Member Amio. Board Member Patterson. Thank you. Um, thank you, Superintendent Reedy, for your report. I, I see that uh, a lot of work has gone into uh, in the last couple of weeks. Uh, I think with the safety, I'm renaming this group, I guess, uh, the safety assessment team, uh, great idea. I mean, this is something that is truly needed in the district, and so thank you so very much for your work. And um, what an amazing group of volunteers. I mean, you cannot say enough about what they do for our students and our community as a whole. Um, truly amazing, and I'm glad I got to meet many of these folks. It's a pleasure and an honor. Um, to our El Dorado students um, and community and teachers who are here, uh, my heart goes out to you, and I am truly, uh, you know, I, um, um, it's, it's very difficult. Uh, this really hits really hard. This is really difficult for me. My father was a, uh, was a um, came in from the military uh, in World War. He was part of World War II. And he suffered, um, 
I think it, back then there was no diagnosis for uh, PTSD. He suffered from PTSD and um, actually um, committed suicide. He had a Bible in one hand and a gun in the other, so this hits pretty close to me. And I think that we could do a little more in APS. I'm good. I'm, I was only two years old at the time, so, you know, I mean, we, life has gone on. Uh, so one of the things that I wanted to say is I think if we look at our budget, if we could look a little closer to see if we can go, if we can get more crisis counselors in, in our schools or take a look at this as a whole and evaluate. And I think what uh, board member Armijo has said is that we do a health, health uh, assessment of our, our district and actually we need to do one of our entire community. And the other thing I wanted to say is, uh, I've lost my train of thought here. We're just sharing something very personal. Um, let me see. Uh, Mr. Olivas, thank you so much uh, uh, for coming in to talk to us about and your concerns about our school. It is, it's, it's um, always good to hear from our community and thank you for being here. And that's my report. Thank you, board member. Um, Montoya Cordova. <laughs> Yolanda. <laughs> Yolanda. Yeah, board member Yolanda. Um, <clears throat> As I heard everyone, you know, all the different speakers that we had tonight, the words that came to my mind was shared leadership uh, and shared decision making. Um, all the way from just from the volunteers that we started out with, and I was so moved by the young fifth grader who, you know, is already starting out and is having an opportunity to be in a shared leadership opportunity and a shared decision making opportunity to help address issues and concerns. And I think that's what this is all about tonight. Um, the teachers from Albuquerque High are asking for an opportunity to be engaged and have that opportunity to be our partners around a shared decision making that is going to impact their school, their culture, and their jobs, um, the places that they work, and how many of us really like that kind of opportunity when it's given to us to, to express our concerns or express our ideas about what we think is best. And for the students at El Dorado, um, you know, uh, I can remember when I first started working with the Department of Health and we had the suicide prevention work that came to our state so that we could start to address that. Um, what's really frustrating, and I, I learned a new word today, so I could turn my frustration into fascination. But my fascination with that is that in our state, we continue to have serious issues with suicide and our young people, and in our state, we still continue to really way underfund activities that we need to support that, whether it's community mental health or whether it's the school support services that we need, like school-based health centers, crisis counselors, school nurses, et cetera. What I wanna do is um, I think we need to continue to keep the faith in terms of what we need to do. I know when we first started with the Department of Health and the suicide prevention work that we were doing, we were responding to so many communities that had a number of crises like this where there was six or several. And, and when I look at that and I was hearing that, like uh, Board Member Garcia was astounded because that is a public health crisis. Um, and so we need to figure out how we're engaging with our public health community to support APS in this issue, because this isn't something that APS can do alone. Um, it isn't also anything that El Dorado community can do alone. However, what I do want to say too is that there is a great promising practice out there and you're already starting it and that's called natural helpers. You've already got a group of youth at your school that are already engaged that want to be part of the solution and I think we need to we need to bank on that. We need to build on the momentum of those students who want to be part of the solution. And in a natural helpers approach, we take natural leaders at the school, such as the leaders that were here tonight, who can also help to become the eyes and ears of the students, who can also become natural referral sources and, me and mechanisms so that we can get young people who are in crisis at the right door. because. Nine times out of 10, a young person is going to approach a young person first. And they do that regularly. I'm seeing the head nods from our students. So let's take a look at that approach and see if there's something that we can do there. Um, I, I, I just, um, 
I know that it can be done. I've seen some tremendous changes in a lot of other communities where similar crises were occurring and it was done. Um, we didn't have to have a school-based health center, although having a school-based health center would be lovely. I wish we could have more of those across the state, across the city. Um, everyone knows I'm really committed to that process. They're not easy to implement, but you know, how do we do that? How do we get our, our crisis community, also our mental health community, to be a partner with you as you're trying to address your concerns? Um, so, and also for the budget cut issues, it's also a shared leadership issue. It's also a shared decision making. We have to look really hard at some of the impact of the decisions that we're making when budgets are being squeezed or things are happening. What are those impacts that are gonna happen that we just don't, maybe we just don't see right, right away. So Mr. Olivas, thank you for coming and sharing what you see as some of those impacts are gonna be because we need to take those into account because there are gonna be students down the line that are probably gonna be impacted negatively and we don't wanna have that either. But how can we do this together um, in times of budget cuts because that's also what's happening. It's not an easy decision, but I think if we get together with our communities and have some real shared leadership and shared decision making, I think we might be able to, to resolve some of our issues. Thank you. Thank you, board member. Uh, board member Garcia. There are many things to, to try to comment on. I'm gonna to try to stay brief. Uh, first, I, I do appreciate the volunteers. I was amazed. Uh, it was lovely to see uh, Mr. Jewell here um, you know he's an incredible uh, everyday hero uh, for all of us um, and the others uh, were amazing um, so thank you for bringing them to our attention uh, this evening uh, to the uh, Albuquerque high teachers thank you uh, keep speaking out um, It's tricky sometimes for us to hear um, things in part because um, it's difficult uh, to try to welcome what may seem like criticism. Um, I think that uh, we are on the same team, so to speak. I think that uh, we have very similar, if not consistent, values. And um, I would hope that uh, there is some way to engage you to be part of the process. The ultimate uh, decision, of course, is the superintendents in terms of firing and hiring and all that good stuff. But uh, I think the more we can strive to be a democratic and inclusive organization, the better our organizational culture will get. Um, but it also means that we have to listen to points of view that are different from ours. And so my hope is that uh, we'll continue to learn how to do that, because I don't know that we're all very good at that. Um, the, uh, the students, I want to thank you for your leadership. I don't think anybody's here. But uh, I very much couldn't tell. Oh, there you are. I didn't. I couldn't tell. Um, I I just have to tell you, you were eloquent and um, very succinct, and made your points uh, very well. And I'm I'm still shocked a bit by the data that you shared. We used to have a survey, youth resilience survey. I don't know if that happens anymore on a statewide basis, but mm -hmm. I really think that survey needs to be uh, geo-mapped so we know what's happening in what parts of the city. Um, we've had a, a leadership problem in that public health, in my opinion, has really been uh, watered down and destroyed in our state. Um, that's my opinion. I worked there for 12 years, so I know a little bit about it, but I'm certainly not an expert. Um, and Mr. Olivas, thank you for coming. I appreciate uh, from a neighborhood association perspective to come in and share what you're thinking. I want to tell you, don't always believe what you read in the newspaper or what you hear. I don't believe we have D schools and F schools. I think we have schools that are struggling and they have to do with the fact that we have been consistently underfunded for years. We've been undermined 
we've been criticized, we've been, teachers have been bad-mouthed and labeled um, as failing teachers, and now we have this process where uh, schools have been labeled as well. And there's some idea that those school grades have credibility. Well, the fact of the matter is you can't replicate the formula. You can't explain the formula as to how they get those grades. And certainly teacher evaluations, uh, we're still hoping that at some point the judge will uh, share some perspective on, uh, on that court case. Uh, much of what I say will not ever get in the newspaper, but I have to tell you that uh, we are in a fight for public health, uh, for public education, public health, for many, uh, many things that uh, we took for granted during the, the days of the war on poverty when we were building these things when I was a youngster. Um, and the truth is I think we have to keep fighting to get back on track. Um, I'm, I'm concerned about us as a district, I'm concerned about us as an organization, and I hope that organizational culture is something that we really look at and we figure out the measures that we can agree we want to look at in order to, uh, to move us forward as a district. Thank you. Thank you, Board Member uh, uh, Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> Peterson, Patterson, Piercy, which, which <laughs> I can't remember myself. Although I, I'll, I'll try to be brief since board member Garcia said many of the things that I had on my mind. Um, let's see, where to start? One, one quick thing, um, just back to this land purchase decision. I just really want to point out that that is a charter school issue, that the charter school is the one that entered into this agreement. And one of the things, I would love to have an investigative reporter really do some research into the deals that are made between the charter schools and landowners, because there are some real concerns there. So the purchase of that property probably is not something that we would have dreamt up ourselves, but it's trying to make the least bad situation that we possibly can with this situation that was out of our hands in the first place. And so that's one. Um, you know, I get really frustrated with this, ad this message, this story that comes out about failing schools, because look at who was here tonight. El Dorado students being articulate, focused, absolutely knowing not just the whole academic thing of how do you, of what's going on, but being vested in the community and here to, to speak their mind and to make their call. Teachers from Albuquerque High, I mean, I would, I would challenge anyone to say that we don't have amazing teachers. And, and the fact that teachers are vested to come and participate in this way. And I do, I am curious because we used to have, I know at one point there really was a procedure for principal selection that guaranteed there is parent voice, there is staff voice, there is voice of certified and classified folks. And so just making sure that that procedure is followed because I know there, there has been one in place. So we, we need to make sure that happens. Um, mental health, you know, I think the district is phenomenal and does a really good job at the kinds of crisis intervention when it comes to, when, I mean, when we had, I know when I was teaching, if we had a child who is sui making suicidal ideations, it was addressed automatically. But the problem is, and I think that sort of at the heart of what the concerns from the El Dorado students are, is that it takes relationship. It takes trust. And that means more than just that crisis intervention. I mean, crisis intervention is not bad at all. But there needs to be 
the kind of counseling that isn't just career focused, isn't just test focused, but that really is based on relationship. Um, and every, every school needs that kind of counseling. And it's something that we've really struggled with. And I, the other part of this meeting tonight that I think is impressive when you saw that, that line of volunteers, the National Merit Scholarship, um, semifinalists, all those folks, really illustrate how we come together as a district, I think, in really incredible ways to support each other, to make good things happen. And so I don't want it to sound like when every time I start harping on the budget, um, I don't want to make it sound like I'm making excuses. And again, I want to thank the especially um, Dr. Gonzalez and Dr. Blakey for the work that's been done around MRI schools and the kind of collaboration that that is, because I think that's really a sign of how do we grow voice, how do we, how are we inclusive, how do we create the kinds of collaborative situations that we know will be best for staff, for families, for students. Um, so we have, we have things that we know how to do. We have things that we're doing well. And the problem is, you know, I, we don't fund schools based on what schools need. Because if we funded schools based on the way th that they should be funded, and I apologize because this is my soapbox, but <laughs> different people come, and so I feel like I need to throw it out there. Um, <laughs> if we had, okay. if we funded schools the way that our students, our children deserve to have them funded, we would say every single school needs the kind of career counselor, testing, whatever, that most counselors end up having to pick up the slack for. But every school would also have a therapeutic counselor who really focuses on developing the relationships with students that are needed. We'd have a social worker in, if not every school, in every school that indicates high need. We would have a community school in absolutely every single school because that's the kind of organization structure that we're trying to grow and build and we are doing it well in some schools but it's not in every school and it should be um, every school would have a librarian every every school would have the music and the art and and all of those folks we'd have EAs that got paid a living wage and we'd have teachers who are you know on the kind of pace but we don't fund schools like that we have a good formula for what it is, but it's a division formula. It's not a multiplying formula. It's a division formula that says, how much money is this state willing to pay for education, and then we'll divide it up. And somehow we'll figure out how to best meet needs. So our per unit funding, which is not exactly equal to every student because some students, you know, special ed kids are worth more than one unit. Kindergarten kids might be more than one unit. Um, I think fourth grade, regular ed, general ed, on track kid is one unit. And most kids span somewhere in between. But that funding, for, for that child, that normal child, quote unquote, is $4,084, $4,000. This district spends 0.8% of its budget on most of the people who are sitting in here tonight, 0.8%. Um, well, 0.8, yeah. 0.8, 0.8. would be 0.008. 0.8 of the budget, thank you. I want to make sure we get that straight. Point, right. <laughs> We're talking percentage, not dollars. Well, it's 80%. Right. Okay. Anyway, less than 1% <laughs> on the people go. sitting in here. Are you talking about central administration? We're to central administration. Central administration. I'm looking at my 0.86%. Less than 1%. Less than <laughs> We do need to be precise, but the point is that this is the per unit amount that we made 
many years ago, 2008. It hasn't gone up. Utilities have gone up. Our student enrollment has gone down. And the only reason why I bring this up every time is to say when people come with needs, they're right. The needs aren't being met. We are <coughs> scrambling to do the best we can. But it's not because our schools are failing. I, oh, one, one quick thing. I know someone did it, one teacher at an elementary school did a calculation. If they have 11 students opt out at one of my schools, their, letter, their school grade will go down a grade. So we're talking small numbers. I, I think the point is this is really a call to action, and it's why I really appreciate everyone who's here, because we are in this together. Some decisions we can make better inside of the district. Some decisions we need help with at other levels, and we need to make that call to Santa Fe. We need, we need to call on our legislature to fund schools the way that they really should be funded. And we need help getting the story out about how are our schools funded? What do we do well? And, it's, and that's not to say that there aren't things where we drop the ball. And we need to hear from the community when we drop the ball. But as a whole, I look at, and again, tonight's meeting, all of those, all of those folks who were lined up at the wall, all the folks here, I think is an indication we're not a failing district. Do we have things we need to deal with? Yes, and we need to do it together. And so thank you for being here. Thank you, Board Member Peterson. That was very brief. Uh, Board Member <laughs> Miller, I got it. I counted, it was less than 10. <laughs> 10 minutes. Uh, okay, how long do I have? <laughs> less than 10. Less than 10. Less than 10. Okay. <laughs> Um, first of all, to the students that are still here and to the ones that left, you make sure and pass it on to them. You are empowered. You have the power to make changes. It is in your hands. And we are here to help you to do whatever we can to make things better for students that are in dire situations that are thinking that their life isn't worth it. Their life is worth it to me and to I know everybody else on the board. You guys matter. You're what tomorrow is. You're what I look forward to. So I know that we for sure don't, I think if we did an audit of mental health services at APS and probably across the country, that audit would show that we are lacking we don't have what we need to help you. And I am so sorry for that. But I want you to know that together, we need to form partnerships with the city, with the county, with the state, because the county does have a tax that is recurring that is going to be used to help with mental health. And that means you all live in the county. So that is there to help you guys to help your friends. So know that, take that knowledge with you. I don't want anybody, I know somebody said that we've been silent. I want you to know that we really haven't been. If I could have a psychologist in every school, we would all want that. We've asked for social workers in every school. We've asked for that. We want that, I promise. That is what we want, and I know that would, that would help. Would it solve everything? I don't know that it would, but I know that it would help. Um, I know somebody said that they felt defeated, um, and that really makes me really sad. I want you to feel that you all can do everything. Don't feel defeated. Know that we are here to help you however we possibly can. Um, I know words are not gonna help, help you cope with some things, and I know that only actions will. Um, so I want to make sure that our budget shows that you guys are number one. Your lives are worth it. And I hope that our budget will show that. I know this year might be a little bit more difficult because we're so far in, but I want to hope that next year that we will be able to do more to try to get that mental health 
services out in as many schools as we possibly can. Um, tomorrow is bright. It is. It's a sad, last Sunday was a sad day, but we have tomorrow and we have the next day. So do what you can to make it as happy for people and listen to them and let people know if you hear something. That's the only way that we're gonna stop things. Pass it on, because they are gonna be talking to you rather a lot of times than coming to, to adults. Um, and I think to Eric, um, we should put resources in a school rather than take it away. Um, I know that's devastating to schools. Um, and I always say if I ever won the lottery and won billions of dollars, I know where it would go. Um, and to Albuquerque High, I mean, I do want to ask this question. That hiring committee, do you all feel, or is Superintendent Weedy, that you're not represented well on that committee? Is that, if I, I can just get a nod from you, that you are not represented well on that committee. You don't have as many people on there as you would like. Okay, yes, um, please let us know what else I think that you should have as much say as is allowed. I know the superintendent is the one who makes the final decision when it comes to hiring, but your voices should, should be heard. I think they should be heard. Um, I, I remember when I was a teacher and we got to sit on committees when we were going to be hiring a new principal and I felt my voice was, my voice was always heard. I'm sorry if you feel that yours isn't. I hope we can make that right. Um, and to our volunteers, it was, uh, I'll remember one, a blind date with a book. I think I've had a lot of those, so I thought that was just wonderful. Our volunteers are just are just fabulous. And to Dr. Candelaria, um, just getting peop all those kids to eat their vegetables, and mm -hmm. I think that's a that's a great thing. Um, I also wanted to extend um, prayers to the Reardon family, to Michael, and to to their two children. I know Jennifer Reardon had great faith and I know that faith has has led her to her to her eternal home, but her family is is left behind, so our prayers need to be with them. So I think that's it. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you very much. Seven uh, minutes. Seven minutes. Yes. I did good. 7.3. Oh, oh, 7.3. Were you asking for applause? Or? Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> Take up the other two. Okay. You can have them, the other two and a half minutes. Uh, well, I'll go on to the uh, President's report. Uh, I spent about two hours this afternoon writing up about 11 points, double sided. And uh, I'm not going to talk to those points. <laughs> I realized that uh, nobody here wants to hear what I had to say about that. But uh, I will address just a couple things. Uh, uh, the, the Blake Theus family is actually lives about a block away from me, or less than a block away from me. And so I was uh, you know, personally aware of, of uh, the family and also uh, with uh, all of the support that they received over time. Uh, I also was very impressed with the memorial service we had at the uh, uh, church. Uh, I'd say there probably were a thousand people there or so. It was a large group. Uh, many, many students from all across the district, uh, Manzano, El Dorado, La Cueva, Valley, all kinds of different high schools, Chisco Heritage, I think they were all there. And so the students here who expressed uh, their thoughts about the mental health and the issues. Uh, very appropriate, uh, very appropriate. And I, and I think, again, what I'd like you to understand and take back to your students is that we are addressing a lot of those things. We, as the superintendent said, we have a 1,000 references on suicides. 
So we are, in fact, having those kind of conversations. Uh, we would like to have more resources for the mental health. We'd like to have more capabilities to address that issue. But somewhere we're missing the root causes. Somewhere we're missing the root causes for why we're having these issues. And that's what this society needs to address. We need to address the systemic things that are problems for our kids, problems for our adults, uh, the mental health things. Uh, and why are we having these issues? That's really the issue. I mean, we're addressing it from the point of view when we, somebody comes to us, but that's, that's a lot of times pretty late. And even if they do come to us, sometimes they don't come to us. Uh, so I really appreciate the comments about having uh, you students being some of the eyes and ears. You are on the floor. You, you do talk with your own students. It's really, really important for you to talk and to be able to know how to take that information and to communicate that with somebody who may be able to get them some help. I'm talking about a counselor, I'm talking about a nurse, I'm talking about a friend, I'm talking about somebody who can get, get the help to the people that you, you hear about. And you don't know. Sometimes you say, well, I heard that, but I'm not too sure. It, don't be too sure. Just go and say, hey, I think there may be an issue. Can somebody address this? And uh, maybe, maybe there's a chance there to, to prevent a few things. Um, I appreciate also uh, my Albuquerque High folks. Uh, I think it's, again, important for you guys to be involved. But again, I want you to understand, too, is the principal is not just for your school, even though that is a primary thing for a principal. But they also interface with all of our administration. And so there's this connectivity here that has to be there. So there's a partnership here that has to be there in that. And I think you guys have a major part of that. I think also that the parents maybe have, have a good part of that. And I think, again, the administration has a part of that. So work on that collaboration. And, I, and I'm pretty sure that the administration is going to make sure that happens. Uh, you know, so I, again, I, it may not be exactly how you guys stated it with your demand, but it's, it's OK. I think, again, you know, you got to start somewhere, right? And so I think that's uh, certainly something that's going to happen well for you. And, and all the best to Albuquerque High. I mean, they are a foundation for our, for our high school here in, uh, in Albuquerque, right? That's why we call them Albuquerque High, I guess, right? Uh, so anyway, uh, I think that's going to be a big deal. Um, uh, one, one thing I, I, I would bring out, uh, I, I did go to the uh, Art of Education Any Given Child event this last Sunday. And uh, I did reflect a little on, on the arts in education because I'm a big supporter of arts in education. But, but what I reflected on kind of also was all the things that we're doing in the Albuquerque Public Schools. So I wrote down a whole list of things of which I'm sure I missed hundreds of things that we're doing because I wanted to tell myself, what is it that we're doing here in APS? I mean, there are just tons of things that we're doing, guys. Tons of magnet schools. We've got family schools. We've got you know, engagement with our communities. We've got, you know, uh, bilingual programs. We've got AP programs. We've got magnet schools. We've got everything in the world going on here. Art is elementary. Art is elementary. Uh, you know, yeah. Uh, I even play the clarinet once in a while. I mean, that's, that's a byproduct. And we are making improvements, guys. We are making improvements. Uh, we've got a lot of things that are improving. And we've got great results in many different areas. And uh, so uh, I just wanted to say, you know, I don't know any other district in the state that does all the things that we're doing. We've got great capital folks. We've got great financial folks. We've got a great academic master plan. We've got rewards from all the national organizations in terms of the things that we've got going. So uh, when we're looking at our MRI schools and we're looking at things like the Genius Hour, the Genius Hour is an example of art and education. It's an example of applied academics, which is what our kids need, experiential learning. It's exactly the kind of thing 
It's going to help our kids. Uh, I am really proud of our staff for what they have done to put together our MRI plans for our schools. And, uh, and I'm proud of the fact that this framework, I think, can be used for many of our other schools. And so we've put together a lot of time and effort in our staff to make sure that that can happen and that we can actually sustain what we're doing in those schools as well as leverage it in terms of scaling it to other schools. And I can guarantee you that we're not going to let anyone take over our schools. So I hope that those plans are approved. <laughs> um, so in summary, you know, I'm really proud to be a small part of uh, this great public school organization, uh, Albuquerque Public Schools, and to be associated with the fantastic educators that I think are part of this organization. I want to say thanks. I want to say keep the faith. And don't worry about getting credit. Because <laughs> our students are going to carry on the credit for years to come. And I'm looking forward to the wonderful year-end events that are going to happen here to highlight all the accomplishments of our students, not the least of which are all the graduations. So thank you very much. And with that, uh, the announcement of the upcoming board meetings, the next Board of Education meeting will be Wednesday, May 2nd, 5 o'clock here. And the next special Board of Education meeting will be Monday, April 23rd in the Dale Martin. And with that, we are adjourned.